All right, up next, in a July 2024 interview, Kevin Feige confirmed more Marvel Studios special presentations like Werewolf by Night and Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special were on the way, with one actively in production at the time. Sounds like old news, but now Marvel head of streaming, television, and animation Brad Winderbaum doubled down on the promise while speaking with comicbook.com. Previously, Feige detailed that the special presentation wouldn't air in 2025, but 2026. The Winderbaum's answer seems to insinuate it could be sooner. Not a lot to go off in terms of details, but what are our hopes and expectations for more 45-minute forays into Marvel Media Multiverse? Yeah, give me more 45-minute forays. I'll take them. I'll take them. <laughs> and uh, I, I fought for this one to, to stay as a feature. A little peek behind the curtain there for you. Uh, we almost relegated this one to a lightning round, but... Uh, admittedly, there are not a lot of details to go off of, but I thought this would be a fun conversation, open the door for some speculation. And I, I really enjoyed those two special features that we've gotten so far, Werewolf by Night, as well as the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. And looking back on them, they couldn't really be more different. Yes, they both kind of, you know, focus on a holiday aesthetic and a certain feeling that's invoked, whether that's, you know, the the holiday cheer or and whimsy or the the spookiness that comes with Halloween and and, and spooky season. So I, I'm thinking like these are a great opportunity. We've seen a lot of you know various Marvel Cinematic Universe formats come and go, be it from the films to the TV series. I still bemoan the fact that the one shots you know went by the wayside, but I think the special features are a really good opportunity to help fill out the universe. Uh, if they want to start seeding some of the X Men, uh, you know, that don't have the crazy, crazy power set, I think if they keep the budgets down on these things, utilize existing sets and productions that are already happening, there's there's a real opportunity to create some value here. So yeah, seeding the X Men I think is a great place to do it. Maybe revisiting some characters that we've seen but haven't got to spend a lot of time with, like Moon Knight comes to mind, She Hulk comes to mind. I, again, I know that they have to be wary about the the computer effects and and how much money they're spending on that kind of thing but if, if they wanted to do a little mini team up if you wanted to see you know moon knight with she hulk with miss marvel and some of the new characters that have been introduced and just have them have a little adventure i think that'd be great but i'm going to come back to one of my favorite things that the marvel cinematic universe has been able to do and while it's always exciting when they're pushing <laughs> the story and the narrative forward and and pushing the envelope I always appreciate when we get to go back and look at these little holes and pockets in the history and fill out the universe like that. So I've said it once on this podcast, I'll say it again. My ideal Marvel one shot is you bring in Alan Tudyk, you set it in the 60s, 70s, have a young Hank Pym in the height of the Cold War and just get some adventures with with Ant-Man. I would <laughs> love that so much. <laughs> Write the check, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the special presentations, they're cool, but they have to be a specific flavor of context, I think, for them to work. Because if you think about, like, from the studio's perspective, they'll they'll give you a movie because a movie has a return on an investment, especially, usually at least, a Marvel movie. And same with a series. Like, it'll have a return on investment. You can stretch it out over multiple weeks. But a special presentation really has to nail something. It has to be something that people are going to subscribe to Disney Plus for. They're not buying it. So you hope that they'll stick around for longer for it. So from a money perspective, the special presentations are, you have to convince someone that they're needed. So you think about the two that we've had. The one uh, that James Gunn wrote, the Guardians Christmas special, he was very open that he just went to Marvel and was like, I wrote this, I want to do this. And at this point, he had built up so much goodwill that they were like, this sounds perfect for Disney+. Plus. Bang, we make it happen. It's not going to work in a theater. It's not a series. Like It's too short for that, but it's perfect for that format. And he had already written it. He shot it. Everything was good to go. So totally made sense. Same with Werewolf by Night. It was a shorter story. It probably wouldn't have translated super well to the big screen. Mm -hmm. Same as like you can't really stretch it out for a series but we're going to make it we're going to release it in black and white it's going to be around halloween like it's going to be a seasonal thing and it made sense so kind of looking forward it's like i think if someone comes to you who's creative and you trust them and you trust their vision and they've got an idea that you love but you just don't think like i don't think that's going to work on the big screen like maybe the character's too small maybe the story's too small or whatever but you love the idea those special presentations can i think be the perfect outlet for something like that 
So it almost seems like they have to be, to me at least, it seems like they kind of have to be a little choosy in how they use them. But whenever they use them, they can use them in those very particular contexts. And I think it, they can be home runs. Like the Guardians one is the per, it's a perfect home run. It's set between two movies. You don't need to see it for uh, the movies. It's not super interconnected, but it's seasonal and you can throw it on on Christmas. And it's like, yeah. a, you know, it's like if you can do that type of stuff with it, like, you know, we've got a trilogy, but between movies two and three, we're going to do a special presentation. It's going to be, you know, seasonal themed or whatever. You can really, I think, nail that format. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's very particular, but when it works, it can really work. Yeah, I, I think you, you're definitely hitting around exactly what I was thinking, which is the idea that not only these movies that you talked about it paying off, and this is not a bet that pays off in a one in one viewing, but it is a bet that pays off for us Marvel fans who are like, well, now I watch the Christmas special every year. I watch Snoopy and I watch the Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, like you gotta you gotta work it in there, and it's a wonderful life. Uh, you know, like it becomes one of those yearly viewings. No? Home Anybody? Alone. I mean, no. Muppets, oh, yeah, yeah. Christmas Carol. <laughs> all right, we all have our we all have our thing. I'm just saying. Those are the ones my family watched. Your point is- <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, I'm getting uh, I'm getting vibes for a binger's uh, a binger's run. Oh Ooh, Christmas. yeah, <laughs> binger's Christmas specials. Uh, no, I I I think that the, so the same thing with uh, Werewolf by Night being a Halloween special. It's a yearly watch for people. They can watch it every year on Halloween and get that vibe. Um, but also, they were both made cheaply. Um, mm-hmm. this is talking about that return on investment. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special was made on set. And in character with the characters who are already on set making uh, Guardians Three, so it's yep, like right. you saved a ton of money. We've we had been talking about that on MCU cast for years. How that would be amazing. Why don't they make like a little smaller movie while they're making the bigger movie? They got the sets, they got the people there. Like make a we've we've joked about like make a romantic comedy with like <laughs> you know the characters in the background of the Avengers or whatever while the big somebody else can worry about the big spectacle and like just give us more time with these characters and that's what they did it's amazing um so i think doing that more and werewolf by night even the way they shot it in the darkness and with an older style of filmmaking where it was kind of cool and campy to have like practical effect sort of cheaply done off-screen transformation type stuff it's like that's just saving money you know what i mean like that movie that was made cheaply and with no named characters that were previously in the, in anything so it's like you know it, it's it's just both those were made really smart and made with repeat viewings in mind even though they're not a series or a movie that's going to be in theaters so so uh, they've done it smart so far, and I think they're going to continue to do that. Yeah, I think you've all hit the nail on the head. Jay, what you said made me think of like, oh, this was between two and three movies, and so it's like two and a half. And that's kind of a fun concept that they could do with these sequels and stuff. If they can do all the things you're all saying, make it connected, but you don't have to have seen everything, which I think is part of their goal with the special presentations, similarly to Marvel Spotlight, which is that still a thing or not? I can't remember. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So much has changed since (laughs) Echo came out. Um, I can't remember if they're sticking with that one. But yeah, I, I like that kind of almost like with some book series where they have like a nine and a half in between books nine and ten it's like here's a little short story and really the two that they've done are so similar to like a five issue comic run where you can just read these five issues and here's a little contained adventure story or it's a side quest or whatever and i i would love to see that be more of a thing but to everybody's point be choosy be smart have fun and don't spend too much money (laughs) no no big deal (laughs) yeah so if we're gonna spend time with uh, just let's go around real fast. One one character or series, who would you want to spend more time with in the MCU? Like if you're going to get a 45-minute presentation. Oh, man. Uh, this is Guardians hard. probably would have been my go-to, and they've already done that. So I'm going to go... I'm gonna go uh, Shang-Chi's cheating, isn't it? One. If we've already no, had that not, long conversation. Not. I feel like Shang-Chi is probably the one that I would love to see more of. I could do a Sam Wilson, Joaquin Torres Ooh, special like presentation. Like Ooh, absolutely! And they're yeah. and they're shooting uh, Cap Four. It absolutely could have. I mean, could have shot that in the in the in between times on that. 
<laughs> we got go. all the ideas tonight. <laughs> it's too much star power and too much money, but I love the idea of like bringing back Jeremy Renner and Scarlett Johansson and mm. doing like a Black Widow slash Hawkeye type adventure. The because Budapest. There's so yeah, there's so much like Black Widow Hawkeye stuff in comics, mm. and they're always going on like these side missions together and all this type of stuff. And would it break the budget? Yeah, but hey, it's we're having fun here, you know. Uh, but uh, I think it would be cool <laughs> to bring those those two back in and just do some kind of like fun like homage to their characters you know and and do some type of a cool cool side quest to be fun yeah yeah i love all those ideas so i I already mentioned maybe seeding the x-men and i mentioned young hank pym but now i'm thinking the eternals it would be cool to go back and Mm -hmm. look at you know some of the eternals like their one-off adventures you know gilgamesh and makari what have you see what they did they did Mm, throughout history we hardly knew ye. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>